Yes. This is the current. And this is what? Total. The difference becomes what? Current. Or once you get the interest, the following year interest, and take it away from uh, your rental payment. So, advance. Rental payment is current liability, right? In the arrears, rental payment and means what? Interest is your current liability. That's what I'm trying to say. Hello? Hello? Uh huh. Open the glass. Okay. So, any other question?
No, you are paying every year 60, 60, 60, 60. That's what you are doing. The rent, your rent is 60. You ask how much you are paying next year. If next year you place 10%, that will increase by inflation. That means as the inflation is increased, the payment is also bad, right? Yeah. But for an account that you need to get the present value of all the payment today, so that that payment becomes right of use what? Asset. Is that correct? So, what do you do? So, we consider the impact of inflation. In other words, we use finance, uh, we call it what? Money what? Cash flow. Money cash flow is the one who has the impact of inflation. And real cash flow is without inflation. So, we use the real cash flows to discount to get a present value liability, or to use the money cash flows. You are real for the first. So we can reassess the lease. The moment the interest, the, the inflation affects the interest, we have to calculate new lease, a new lease liability. If it increases, we credit the liability and debit what? At two thousand. But if you inflate them, at the one. That means you are only using year one inflation rate to do what? Oh. Inflate. Who told you year two also be the same? Mm -hmm. And who told you year three will also be the same? In other words, if you also inflate them, what is the impact on your fuel health? Reduce If you inflate them, what is the impact on your fuel health? In what way? <laughs> Because as you inflate the figures, right of use asset what? Increase, no? And now right of use asset becomes a what? You, you depreciate it. The higher the figure, the higher what? Depreciation profit. So you see that you are reducing your profit. You are reducing your profit for inflation you are anticipating. That has no what? Okay. It has an effect on your financial statement. But anyway, the question you had, I see against two words, alternative. But in my view, the alternative should have been the the first one is the alternative should have been the real answer. Mm -hmm. Now, do you see the approach they use to answer the question? Where is it? The approach they use to answer the question. Please open it up. I wonder. It's not about you, it's about the approach they use to answer the question. That was the one question. What did they say? Mm -hmm. Sir, what is the question? It's on the platform. Last yeah. thing, last thing. Mm -hmm. Last thing question. Question 3A. It was on leases. Reporting treatment of the 
Abel in the financial statement for the year ended. In the financial world, statement. You should advise them. <laughs> eh? Is that your question? Oh, I thought, okay. Let's read it. On 1st January 2022, Avocat Gain Plantation, Grain Plantation, PLC, Avocat acquired a combined harvester from what? A woolly farms technology for a large, a lease for five years, which with installment payable annually in advance. The useful life of the harvest, the harvester was estimated to be five years. Avocat paid the first installment, which is 60 million, in 1st January 2022. However, subsequent lease payments are subject to increase or decrease in work, lie with the customer price index. So at the lease inception, Avocat estimates, they estimate that the customer price index will increase by 10% annually. However, CPI increased by 14. You see that you, if you are if you are used, you use 10. Middle other year is not 10, it's now at 14. So the CPI is now 14%. That now makes the lease payment, which was 16, now to be 68.4. Now, I was paid in January what? First, 2023, the second installment. At 31st December 2022, Avoca estimated that the annual increase in uh, uh, CPD will continue to be what? 14%. Avoca is also required to make a usage fee. Apart from the lease payment, when he's using the asset, he has to also pay a fee. They don't want them to see. They are trying to guarantee the use of the asset. Otherwise, they use the asset so much. So, if you use the asset, you are supposed to use the asset for 30,000 watt, 30 million units per watt machine. If you use about 30 million, you pay what? 0 0.3 per watt. Ever. So, at the inception date, so I will plan that the harvester will have, will what? Will have used. To achieve how many? 40. That's what they, they thought, right? Yeah. Remember, that's what the actual. So now, during the year, we're going to have a seller of 40 million, which is 10 million above what? The 30. So that means 10,000 acres above, right? Remember, they are paying this 0 0.3 pesos per acre. So you should be able to calculate where they go with the 3 million. That 3 million is the lease payment. Is there a lease payment? No. No. Do you know that if you are asked to advise, and uh, you tell the examiner that, variable lease payment are payments that are subject to what? Changes based on index and rate. You made that statement. Therefore, the increase in the price indexes where the lease payment will vary is really a lease payment. However, the payment of 3 million, it does not based on rates, but based on usage. You can avoid that one. Can't you avoid it? No. Can you avoid the increase in inflation? Mm -hmm. So because you can avoid the 3 million, it's not a valuable lease payment. You are not you are just writing. This statement alone can fetch you two months. You are advising. That's what I was asking. What is the approach in answering the question? You saw that they brought uh, the lease term and they also brought the useful life of what? The asset. Why would you comment that the right of use asset should be depreciated using the what? The law of. Can you make that statement to us as well? This is level 3, you are advising, maybe you don't know. When we finish, we see the way they are going to approach the whole thing. So it's not all about calculations at this level. We are going to advise. Most of the point, they did not state any standard. They said advice, right? 
If you start to advise, you are going to go to by telling them what standard you are going to apply. When you look at the whole thing, it's easier to get a match and it's difficult to get a match at a level three. Okay. Now, our power, incremental borrow. Now, they also brought incremental work. Borrow rate and what? Rate what? Did they bring rate increase in the lease? Did they bring rate increase in the lease? Did they bring rate increase in the lease? No. Are you not supposed to rate, use rate increase in the lease? No. So you cannot keep quiet and go and use incremental borrow rates. Don't do that. You tell them that we are supposed to use either interest rate implicit in the lease or incremental borrow rate. But we can only use incremental borrow rate in the absence of what? Interest rate implicit in the lease. Therefore, since interest rate implicit in the lease is not given, then we have to apply the incremental borrow rate. This statement must be made. You are advising them, they don't know what they are doing. If you go and use 11 percent, you know, but you have not told them why you are using 11 percent. You don't get a mark. Mm -hmm. They are testing on the principle. So that was the question. So I was now asking, what is the approach in answering this question? If you go to a solution before the calculation cell, let's see the approach. Avoca PNC will account for what? By what? Report right of use asset and what? Corresponding what? Obligation. I see. I versus what? 16. I see that in the name. Say that we must recognize what? Lease asset at what? Initial cost. Initial cost. That's the lease liability, right? Plus directly what? Indirectly. Initial direct cost. And subsequently, it should be depreciated over what? Least the lease term. See that statement I made. The lease liability is also recognized initially based on the present value of future what? Lease payment. Discounted by using interest rate implicit in what? Lease or what? Then they see incremental what? Borrow rates. If the format is not really available, so that we can only use incremental borrow rate if they. In, in the least implicit is not available, right? So they are making all these statements. Hmm? Now, subsequently, the lease liability is adjusted by finance cost, lease payment, and what? Great measurement of the lease liability. Is that what we have been doing? This one is adjusted by what? And that's not what? Mm -hmm. If there's any measurement, you also bring it on board before you get it. Or the assets is also depreciated to know the caravan. They're, they're describing what's to be done. What they are coming to do as Sigma Financial Position Extra, you can briefly describe it. You cannot just put weapons. Then the annual installment are tied to general price increase, right? But since the variability of the payment is due to index, such as payment, such payment are considered to be unavoidable. Or if they are tied to index, you can you avoid them. Therefore, they are variable what? Least what? Payment. Because they are tied to what? Index. The usage-based payment, however, can Cannot be, can be avoided, and hence they should be treated as what? As the criteria what? cost. As and when you pay them, you write off to what? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Rather, rather than what? Least payment. Did you understand? I just said rather. 
start at this field. So you do that like that? Yeah, you have to start it. <laughs> start afresh. So. <laughs> so we have to measure my work, the least. So at the end of year one, a new uh, information shows that the installment will rise due to higher work, higher than expected inflation rate. Hence, the least that means to do a at the date using the original discount rate. Before they now move on to show the records. So when you see, and even if this, I think PPE came last year too. Was there any PPE in last year's standard? Mm. If you look at the approach, they try to tell you what does the standard say, what is the principle. You know, you cannot really talk about everything. They say if you realize the question is on uh, the question is on IFRS 2, share this payment. And it is basically on somebody having the right to choose. Then tell them what IFRS was. <coughs> Two says, you might decide not to talk about equity-based settlement. You might decide not to talk about what? Cash-based settlement. But you tell them that IS, IFRS 2 says that. Anytime, they, they can go ahead and talk about all the compound parts and make a conclusion. Because that's what it is. So are we having a full class now? Uh, Prince was not in last week, and then uh, Cynthia and then who? Matthew. I was just is not around, we just have some more time. Go back to the US time. I reckon it's the US time. Now you know that, right? Aha! Very dangerous. Very dangerous. What's your mind? If you say your wife is dangerous, you mean? Oh, yes. We had a party and then the wife was calling, calling, this guy was not comfortable. <laughs> he has to be a big man to the party before you can ask him to do this. I thought he was a girlfriend. He was a girlfriend. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that party, that so, let's continue. I advise what we did was look uh, at. Leave free assessment and lease work yeah, modification. Oh, yeah, so who can tell me briefly about lease free assessment? Mm. What do you say about lease free assessment? How do you account for it? Mm. And what's the concerns when you have lease free assessment? Mm. Uh huh. Mm. Yes. Yes. Mm. What do you say about lease free assessment? Uh -huh. Dominic, this is your assessment. You talk, you talk. Your money. 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 Your the condition existed uh, as part of original, original lease. So then we do a uh, reassessment. So at the inception date, those conditions you think you do not meet it. You are not sure. We are not sure. So therefore we treated at this as single member in But as time goes on, those conditions are now becoming power for that need to undertake. So if you are not undertaking them, it means you are doing what? Just reassessing the original lease. Example is mm -hmm. um, maybe you entered into a lease agreement um, for three years, but you had um, an, an option, option to extend, extend for another, for another two years. years, but you were not set at the date of inception. And it, you were not set. What is the time? What is the what is, what is the, 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 the terms used? 
Non cancellable lease period is what? The, the lease term is non cancellable lease period plus an option to extend what? The lease. Yes. Where the lessee is what? Reasonable certain to exercise the option to extend. So at the date of at the date of exception, you are not reasonable certain that you are able to exercise the option. Therefore, your lease term will become the non cancellable lease period. But as you start the lease, if that option is not becoming certain, you have to extend it by now what? Reassessing the lease because that option was attached to the original lease. The modification, you are just changing the scope. Or, oh? and you say that when you are changing the scope to add more, account for the addition as a new lease and the old one too differently. But when you are changing the scope to reduce it, you have to reduce the lease liability and also reduce lease what? Assets. That's how we end it. You see, the issues are not really. If you look at lease, let me be frank with you. Lease don't have any, you know, they don't have technical technicalities. Lease generally don't have technicalities. Mm -hmm. Whatever be the case, you recognize right of use as a right of lease liability. Or if it's real asset, it's real to me. There's no technicalities there. Unlike I, for example, what? 50. Mm -hmm. Do you understand? As for I, it's me. The issues are many. Okay. So we are moving on to sales and lease back. So the motivation and the assessment, they are all under the IRS. IRS 16 leases. You, you, the lease you enter into. <laughs> huh? But sales and lease back. So you said the reduction in scope. You reduce the asset and reduce scope. The reduction in scope. That means that you are not going for low, you are going for three floors. You are not going for only one two. You want to lambi to reduce. As a lambi to reduce, automatically your asset is reduced. So you need to come with your new lambi to get on them. I don't have that set here. So, as for lease, uh, sales and lease back, eh? I don't know whether Alexander was confused or he brought it in level two. You've <laughs> uh, not even finished level three, I'm really sales and lease back to level two. So, last minute, I had a call. Ah, is lease, sales and lease back in level two? I said, ah! That particular city was well, sales and lease back in level two. I said, no, no, no. So, sales and lease back, it has been tested in level two. So, they will not spare you in case. What is it about? So, go to the, go to the what? Please go to the note that I sent to you. Open the note that I sent to you. Scroll down, you see sales and lease back. Sales and lease back. Right. So take a note. The note I sent on this is sales and lease back. Okay. Page what? Page what? Okay, so starting from page 32, 
sales and leads backwards. Transaction. If you are going to encounter a question for sales and leads back transaction, three situations must occur. One of them will have to occur. Hmm? The whole concept is that you have an asset where you are using for the business. It's part of a PP. But you want money. So you decide to sell the asset to me. So I will not become the new owner. Then you now come back and lease the asset from me again. So that I can still be using it. But you give it back to me. Yes, because you have lose it. No, you said you have an asset. You have the asset. You sold it to me. I'm the owner. Then you now come back and say you want to lease the asset back in your books and start using it. Uh, me myself, I yes. will use it uh, because you sold it to me uh -huh, because and leave it back. Yes, I was thinking because you you will not say that you permit me to use the asset. Uh -huh. So that's the agreement we have. Okay. You sell it to me. Okay. Then you lease it back. You understand? So the sale will be qualified under IFRS 15. It's actually a sale. So since the sale, you have to remove, want to remove the assets from your goods because you have sold. The question is, what if the fair value of the you are selling to me is 50 CD? Huh? That we can sell to everybody as 50 CD. <coughs> but because you have the intention to what? Come and leave that. You decide to sell to me at 50 by CDs. What is happening? You could have sold the asset for 50 CD. But because you know you come and leave back for me, you decide to sell it back to me. To sell it to me at what? 55 CDs. Why are you selling below the, above the fair value? I need so that means that the question that will come, can you do that? The sale price is higher than what? That's another option. Or if it's 50 CDs, you can sell to me at exactly 50 CDs. That means the sales price is at what? Fair value. You have to know how to account for it. And the third position is that instead of 50 CDs, you decide to sell to me at 45 CDs, lower the fair value. In this scenario, how do you account for them? So, the first scenario there is sales and lease back at what? Fair value. We are going to look at a sales and lease back at what? Fair value. So, on page 33, <laughs> why PLC sells an asset and lease it back? The transfer qualifies as a sale in accordance with IFRS 15. XPLC, 33. XPLC sold an asset and leased it back. The transfer qualifies as what? A sale according to what? Details of the asset is that the current amount of the asset is 1 million. But they sold it for how much? But the fair value was how much? Uh. So after they said, they said that they want to lease back the asset for 20 annual what? Payment. Of what? Three, eight, three. That means we pay this amount every year. The interest rate implicit is 5%. Uh, mm -hmm. So therefore, you have to use the 5% to discount all the 83951 for the next 20 years, right? Mm -hmm. To their present value to form your liability. Mm -hmm. So can we get annuity for 5% for 20 years? Mm -hmm. They gave it to us. Uh -huh. So, in that case, you should be able to know your liability in your what? One, which was 1046221. Are you following? Mm -hmm. That 1046221 will automatically become your what? Right of what? Right of use what? Asset. But here, yeah. that's what we have been we know, yeah. right? Yeah. That's what we know. But now that there is what sales and lease back, we have to find out what will be the right of use asset. 
Ja. What is going to happen is that you have to, on day one, know your lease liability. Hmm? So what is my lease liability? Now, right, brother. This is our biggest one. Uh huh. One zero. One zero. Four six. Four six. Two two one. Two two one. This is this target. The thing is that. Since you sold the asset to me at thousand what? Three hundred. It's not a fair value. Mm -hmm. When you are also coming to me to leave the asset back, huh? Won't I also charge you rental payment? Yes. My rental payment of how much? Eight what? Eight what? Eight three. Eight three. Eight, three. Nine, five, one. Nine, five, one. Five, one. Five, four, eight. Eight. It's also what? It's a deal. That's a rental payment. 20 years under a rental payment. In the question. The sales and lease back will say we pay 20 years under a rental payment of 839.51.48. Are you seeing it? In your question. In your question. In your question. When you start, after the. You see the current amount, then in terms of the lease, 20 years.
Have you seen the property of Ghana that are For asset you have sold. Oh? Now, will the asset come back to your books? Yes. For that of which asset? Yes. So that asset has come back to the form of which asset? Do you want to recognize profit on that portion? When you have not actually, in fact, you did not sell that portion. So you can only recognize profit on the portion that you sold. But the portion that came back as right of what? Of use asset. So right of use asset. Okay? You are not going to debit that account. That, what you are going to debit, is what you are going to have it for. Hmm? Yeah. So this is how the calculation is going to be. If, with a total liability of one, you know right, this one leads to asset. This one leads to asset, right? So if, one zero, four six two two one. 4, will lead an asset of what? You don't know what? Mm -hmm. Then the fair value. What is the fair value of the asset? One, three, hundred thousand, right? Give you an asset of what? Mm -hmm. Okay? This one million, the third value is this. This one will also give you an asset. So what do you think would be the right of use asset? So I say that every time you are looking for a right of use asset, right of what? Use asset. Then the formula is lease. Lease what? Liability. Over. Mm -hmm. uh, is it fair value? Yes. Fair value. Mm -hmm. Times what? Mm -hmm. Current amount. Mm -hmm. Which means that 104 mm -hmm. mm -hmm. mm -hmm. All over what? 300. 100. Times what? This gives us our right of use what? Asset. Asset what? Lease what? Lease liability. So if you want to get a right of use asset, look for lease liability. What is the right of use asset? 804781. Okay? Now, so a question. Mm -hmm. um, the sales that we made, mm -hmm. the double entry, where would the 200 be from? It's supposed to be our profit, isn't it? So it will be in PM. So let's, it will be in PIM. But let's balance it and see something. Let's finish balancing it. Now, we we'll do not ask the Rock Nasa as a Rock Nasa what? Mm -hmm. So Liz was. Liability of what? One zero four. Uh huh. Six two two one. Debit credit. Debit credit. Will it balance? What is the difference? What is the difference? So let me. I want the. I want the difference here. I want the difference here. Get it or credit? Credit. Five. 
is uh, 5614. Five, four. Four. We say this is our gain on product or profit. That will be taken to us. What we are trying to say here is that. I don't know why it will work, but let's see what that. So we now know how to get the right of use assets. If I take an asset with a fair value of one three hundred. I will sell again what? Profit of how much? Three hundred. But the fair value of the asset is uh, eight zero four eight seven eight one five. The difference between these two is what? The friend is going to be seven. If this one never ever change your format. Mm. Uh, so why are we doing like this? Hmm? Why why are we doing like this? Yeah. I want to prove this figure. I want to explain this figure. But I don't I'm not sure. It's what? Four one four nine five. Four nine five. Four nine five. Two one five. Mm -hmm. So the uh, comma. Today is right. Four nine five. Comma. Two one. One five nine. Yes, sir. Against what? This. Okay. Now what? Now what? I think this should be. Who? Thousand, right? 
You sold it for how much? Why did you sold it for how much? <laughs> Making profit on what? This time you are bringing your profit here. Game. But you are bringing back 804 784 back to your heart. Profit related to this one should not be worth less. The profit related to this one should be worth less. That's why I can if you say that if thousand, one million will give you three hundred. The balance that I'm not recognizing, how much will be its profit? You realize that we're going to have five, eight, what? Five, eight, six, four. See the concept then? So, this is an entry. So now, you are not going to use this one as a right of use one. And your liabilities are going to be this when you now start what? Because you amortizing it. It will be adjusted by the interest and the rent of payment. This is where the sales and lease back is at work. Let's go further. Where the sales and lease back is not at level. So the next illustration is on that. Let's check. The next illustration. Uh -huh. The next illustration. So which uh -huh. Yes. Sell not at spend by the lease back. Uh -huh. XPLC sells an asset and leases okay. its back. Okay. The transfer qualifies as a sale according to IRS 15 criteria. Okay. Details of the assets carried amount is 100, 1 million. So the same, the same thing, carrying amount is what? 1 million. 1 million. Sales proceeds, 1.5. Sold it for 1, 500. Where the fair value was what? So why they sell it a bear the fair value? They thought that the money they are going to receive, if they receive only 1.3, it will not be enough. You add additional what? 200. So if you can sell something that is what? 1.3 to me for 1.5. When I'm also going to charge my rent, how do you think I will charge my rent? Uh -huh. So check what is the rental payment now? What is the rental payment in this case? This one of what is now what? Hmm? So if we do you know this hundred thousand is not a fair value? Do you know it's not a fair value? So since it's not a fair value. What is the present value of all these payments? Mm -hmm. So what are you doing? So what point what? Four six. Four six two two. Giving us what? One two six. One two four six two two zero. One two four six two two zero. So this becomes our what? Not this line. This becomes a liability on us. Not a least liability. Because inside here, it's not a correct word. A fair value of the lease. Something is being added. But sir, if we are winning. How do you know? What I'm saying is that. The asset you are selling for me, the fair value is what? But you sold to me at how much? How much do you take for me in addition? 200. Or? You didn't sell at 1.3 in the first question. In the first question, you sold at 1.3, so it was fair value. So you took some at 1.3, and sold it at 1.1. Because of that, this rental payment is also high. So this is a total what? Liability. From that day, we assume that. 
There's a financial word. Liability. Because I took 200 from you. 200,000, right? If you subtract that 200,000 as a financial liability, you still come back to 104 6220 as a what? Lease liability. So this is now your lease liability. It's the same thing, you always get the same lease liability. Therefore, your right to use asset will not change you. Your right to use asset will not change. Just that here will change to what? Here will change to what? Right. That means there's a profit of what? 500. Out of that profit of 500, you have financial what? Financial liability. That will come here, 200. Further reducing so that profit is not 300, right? Uh huh. So the balance, this one will be correct. You just add it to two hundred here and add it out. Everything is the same. Then you have a financial one. Mm -hmm. So how do you account for the liabilities now? How do you account for the liabilities? Do you want to account for them as one liability or you want to account for one separate lease liability and separate financial liability? <laughs> so, when I come here, I will say that lease was liability. Lease liability. The book they account account for it together. They are not going to account for it together. So we say this that we want to say balance DD. And what? Interest, right? Rental. Payment, which is kind of what? Thousand. Then what is the year one? What is my lease liability? One zero four. Six two two one zero right? Uh -huh. But rental payment is one. The rental payment is not what? But the rental payment is supposed to be what? Huh? What to be a rental payment? Hmm? Eight. How do you get an 83955? <laughs> what if there was no price one in the person? <laughs> <laughs> this person, what if there is no price one in the person? Because I told you that 100 is lease payment plus something else. So we change that one now. So how much do we lease payment? Don't tell me that 100,000 is 200,000. That would also work. So, what we are saying is that if you can use 100,000, right, and discount and get two, four, eh, and there are two, what? What are the total here? One, one, two, two right? So, if I use 100,000 discount and get one, two, four, six, right? Two, two, one. Zero. zero. Mm -hmm. Then how much will one zero four six two two zero give you? Mathematics. So that you know the portion that is for the lease and the portion that is for what? The financial liability. Please. Yeah. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. What is financial liability? Mm -hmm. Financial liability <laughs> is accounted for under IFRS 9, where you have an obligation 
pay money in the future. That's what? Any contract. Any contract. That will give rise for you having to pay money in the future. Whereas the corresponding person also have money to what? Receive in the future. There's a, you have a financial liability, right? Then when you read under this financial liability, they say that it is as uh, least is outside the scope of IFRS what nine. You know, lease also lead to the same thing. But when it comes to lease, they use IFRS what systems account for it. So now, looking at it, there's a contract where you sold some for me, which is supposed to be thousand what three. You sold to me a thousand what five. In that contract, is going to result to me paying the 200 to in the future. So I have a lease like this. Then, the financial was like this. So, the book just accounted everything as what? Well. Total liability. That is the 200 for the thousand. Uh -huh. So they brought one, two, four years. Therefore, you can bring the whole one, 100 years. <coughs> That's what the book did. But I'm saying that, let's say this is lease like this. So they're going to know how much of this relates to the last. So how much will be the figure? 8, 3, 9, 5, 1. 8, 3, 9, 1. 5, 1. 5, 1. This is what we have. Uh -huh. So what's the payment? Rental payment. Rental payment. Yes, it's rent. <laughs> <laughs> rent. 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 <laughs> then balance what? Add it down. So what would be the interest here? Five percent, eh? So what's the interest here? What's the interest? This what? Five percent or this what? Five two three one one. Five two three one one. Good. So, this is how you account for the lease was. Liability. Okay? Mm -hmm. And I can't say financial what? Financial liability. Why do you also have balance what? BD. Eh? So, year one is going to be how much? 200 what? Of which you pay interest. This becomes finance what? Cost, right? Both of them goes to your yeah, finance cost. So the one to how much here? Five what? Percent. Percent. So which will be what? Ten thousand. Ten thousand. Then you have what? Lease eh? What? What do you want to give to it? Coupon payment. You pay out. Financial liability. Yes. Are you getting That's your coupon payment. Uh huh. So, lease. Lease. What do you call it? Interest what? Payment. Interest. Okay, interest payment. This is a finance cost, interest payment. Which is our what? How much is that figure? The difference, right? One six zero four one. Seven six. Ah, one six zero four nine. Then you don't have to balance what? Cut it down. The difference one six zero four nine. The total was hundred thousand. Where you brought this one and what? And this one and what? So this is where we have what? Sales and lease back. Above what? Fair value. You are taking money today. So we rest assured that your what? Rent will also be increased. You just join, right? <laughs> work, 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 work. We are looking at sales and lease back. If you don't understand, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. 
you got the first one, you sold to me a thousand three. When I also charge the rental, I'll make sure I charge at market value, fair value. That's what we did first. In the second scenario, the asset is thousand three, and you sold to me a thousand one five. When I'm also going to charge my rental, I'll also charge a bare bit. So the hundred put is the rental payment that we have. When you use the discount, you will get a total amount of one, two, four, six, two, four, six, two, two, or two zero. Okay. This liability, two hundred in it, is money you took from day one because thousand five and thousand three is two hundred. So your lease liability is actually one zero two what? One zero four six two zero. This is your lease liability. This is also liability for me. There's called financial liability. Please, are you following it? Yeah. Now this lease liability will come here, of which interest will also come. But the rental payment is hundred. Portion is related to the lease liability. Portion is related to what? The financial liability. Which you separate it. Then you account the lease separately. You also bring the what? The financial liability. In that way, also bring the portion and your account separately. So that when they take their loan books or they are looking at it, they will know that this is the case. That's the concept of what? A bad fair value. What if there's another portion there, right? A follow up. Here, they sold it below what? The fair value. How do you treat that? The fair value was what? One what? Three hundred. Three hundred. I was in this situation. Yes, sir. You have an asset. If you sell it to anyone else, you sell to me a thousand three. Oh? But because you have intention of selling to me and come back to lease, you deserve to sell it back to me at only a thousand two. When you are also coming for the lease and I'm going to pay the rental, what will happen to the rental too? I also reduce it. So, check, what is the rental payment? Seven, five, nine. Seven, five. Nine, two, seven. Nine, two, one. Seven. Seven. At the new factor of what? Twelve, and what? Four, six, two, two. Four, six, two, two. two, two. So, what is the liability? Nine, four, nine, six. Four, six two, nine, four, six. Two, two, two one. Two, two, one. 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 And you are saying that? This is a liability, right? This is supposed to be our lease liability. There was a rental payment not reduced. It was reduced. So because it was reduced, this liability that we say is a lease liability is not up. Okay? So we have to adjust it by how much? 100,000. Which will now give us one zero four six two two at zero. Do you know where the hundred thousand is coming from? Yeah, no. The difference between what? So when it was fair but above, did you subtract the difference from the figure yeah. before it was above? Yeah. Now that it is also below, yeah. add back together for the least liability. So this is your least liability, not this one. You see that? This is the lease liability. But remember, to get right of use asset, it's lease liability. Over, Over what? Fair value. Fair value times what? So this figure will not change. Have you seen that? This figure will not change. This figure will also change. Just that this figure will change to what? In that case, do you have any liability to pay? Rather, you have what? An asset of what? Hundred thousand. So you bring hundred thousand here. The right? balance, the same profit you should. So the right of use asset is not affected by whether it is above, below, or what? Uh, neither will your liability be affected. Your lease liability will be affected. 
if it's a bear, you're going to have a higher leaf like it where you adjust it downwards. If it's below, you're going to have a lower leaf like it where you adjust it one.
you can, so if you bring it here and you start to bring the hand there, you will not get the whole concept. <laughs> you don't understand that person. So you have to still do it this way. Yeah, this is how you can do it together. Because your lips are this going to be up, so you don't do it together. It's only when you are one. You see, if this is your first time you are hearing this, I know for sure you are You need to understand it. If you don't go and look at it, you still have a problem. Aha! Uh -huh. Because it is building upon knowledge. Like the list with assessment and what else. See that? I don't take my time to take a full list question to solve. If you want to do that, then how many times are you going to do it? But I have a way of summarizing it. I have a question. I have a question. I want to summarize it. You need to know what is detailed as your own time. Let's do a thing, a normal word. Let me do a question. Solve it like the West Indies. Then you get understanding. All that we are talking about, what if you edit the exams? Huh? They give you everything. You search for implemented borrowing. See? You search for least interest in the list. Uh, interest in the list. Um, nothing is there. Won't you still do your advertisements? If I give you a question now, right now, where I ask you do what? Where I do not give you implemented borrowing? <laughs> of what? So the rental installment is 500,000. How many years? Five installments. Okay? But the rental payment is going to happen now. Payment in what? So in advance. In advance. However, the asset you are leasing, huh? the asset you are leasing, do you know that you always discount this hundred to get the present value and say that's the right of this asset? The person was so generous and said that the purchase price of the assets or cash purchase price the fair value of the assets, right? So the purchase, if you are not leasing, how much you have bought it today? Is the present value of what? The rental, right? So the purchase price is six five hundred. Okay. In that case, using some of your digit. Yeah, some of your and perhaps. You say at least you don't have to go and spend some of your digits. So using some of your digits, how do you account for this? Automatically, I will explain. Automatically, right of use asset is how much? 6500 You got that cash purchase price. You don't understand that? What, which you are going to divide by what? Five. Okay? To know your lease payment. But when you come here, if you look at this whole transaction, you, you can pay thousand, 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 right? The total payment I'm going to make for you is how much? And you are selling the thing for me for how much? What is the difference? Thousand five for what? Thousand five for what? For me not paying today, but taking how many years to pay? Five years. So the thousand five becomes what? Interest. The thousand five becomes what? Interest. So if the thousand five becomes interest. If the thousand five becomes interest, 
All what I can do is that since today, Balan did you right? Since today, that is year one. The liability is six words. Yeah. It's not a liability. It's not a liability. Yeah. Rental is paid in words. <laughs> so rental. Of how much? In now, I'll bring what? Interest. Interest. I think the interest was because I have to get it right. I'll bring my what? Interest. Before I bring my balance what? The question is, I only know that interest for for how many years? Five years. Four years or five years depend on is thousand one. Five. How much of the interest will that take to your one? How much will that take to your two? How about let it to your trade? So that divide it equally. Do you know when you look at what you have new, you realize that at the beginning the interest is higher. As the asset is going, the interest is reducing. Yeah. Uh -huh. So how do you apportion this interest? That's why as I said, I use some of your words. Okay? So anytime you hear some of your digits, this is what you can do. Start. Is this time from your one for your zero? Yeah, what I said? Yeah, one or your zero? Zero. zero. So it says zero, one, two, three, four. You can go to five. So when you do that, you have counted your installment payment. Then you bring the four to what? Zero. Three to what? Then you have what? Eight. Three, two, one, one. Zero. You see that I've done it. Uh -huh. So I'm interested in this case. Then add them. This plus this plus this plus this plus this. Then I'm going to use this one to apportion my interest. So year one, it will be four over ten times what? Thousand five. So my year will be what? Six hundred. And life is easy. When you come here, three over what? Times thousand what? Five hundred. My year two will come. Okay, the rent down will continue to what? Thousand. Then you have the balance tied down. You have a credit liability and a credit liability. But you have able. So anytime they want you to do some of your deeds, eh? Anytime they want you to do some of your deeds, they are like to do the cash for this one. If the payment was in arrears, if the payment was there, yes, you know, this would have been come here first, right? Interest would have come. But that means that you have to have said that. One, two, three, up to what? Five. Then it start from here. Five. Five what? Four. Four. Three, two, one. Add everything. Fifteen. So you have what? Five over what? Fifteen times thousand five hundred. This is nice. <laughs> now, what about if we enter into the exam hall? Do you know that our right of use asset is always the present value of what? This language. The exam will give you the right of use asset. Like the way they cash the purchase price. They right. also give you interest rate implicit in the lease. Then you use the interest in this studies, discount them, and realize that you have a figure slightly different from the what? The cash which is price. What will you do? Which one will you use? Which one will you Five year is the right? Hundred, 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 hundred. Hundred, which I want you that for right of use as I don't go to the exam and be for it. Search for what? The interest, right? Yes. Implicit in the lease. If it's ten percent, discount all this to get the lease liability. That one forms the lease right of use asset plus payment made before.
for or on commencement date. Plus directly attributable cost incurred by what? Is that what I'm saying? Those directly uh, what are the not there. You discount all this and realize that it's for what? 500. This is supposed to be what? The least liability. The right of asset. Meanwhile, the person has even given you that the, the cash purchase price of asset is for what? 570. Usually, it's supposed to be the same. So, um, let's go with this. Because that's the one that's going to affect me like it. Or this. It's not this one. Uh -huh. So, usually, it's supposed to be the same. And most of the times, when you see questions like this, when you try to discount them, you realize that they're the same. Just that I give you more information. Are you looking for another standards? We are spending so much. We are spending so much. Yes, we did that last week. Sir, please can wait for ten days. Let's speak a question. Let's speak a question. Okay, one question. Then we move to another standard. Let's do the past question. Let's do the past question. Okay, let's do the past question. Okay, let's do the past question. Uh -huh. I was asking those who have any. Tomorrow, tomorrow, 10 o'clock, I have an engagement. So, as now, not be available around 10. But I'll be available around 12. So, I've spoken to a tax man. Just tomorrow. Unfortunately, you know, also be available in the morning. Oh. Uh -huh. So, which means that me are not coming to my class. I will come at my 12 <laughs> and then at, at, at about 3. <laughs> if they want to have their tax, they can continue for what? They can continue for what? 3. So, where who is me, I in this class? Um, <laughs> so, so, what it means is that. The tax will come on the tomorrow at 3 o'clock. Hey. I said, man. Thank you, In the morning, no, no class. class. Because I'll not be able to have something to do. Okay. Okay. I said, I'll not be able I said, by 12, I should be down with what I'm doing. And you continue from 12 to 3. That's here. That's here. Then after the CR, 3 to 6, tax. But I think we are supposed to change it so that tax man will come in the morning. Uh -huh. That's, but he, the man cannot be available in the morning because he's having letters. Uh -huh. He's doing his MBA. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. So it's even good if we can even come in the morning and start some questions. Why is waiting for me? Somebody can lead. I'll give you some. You see, all right, you just come in the morning and let somebody start facilitating. You see that you have a Or I'll come and pick a console question. I'll come and pick a console question. Don't leave sit in the house because tomorrow is Saturday. Then you come, then you start solving. I'm not cancel my class, I'll come at you. You solve and wait for you. Uh huh, that's what I'm saying. So, if I write to you in class? Yes! Oh, you know what I'm saying? Then send me a stick with me. So, what? Huh? What bless you? 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 Can you go to the past question? Yes, past question. We are not a question of our own, past question. I think you said we are going to another standard. Another standard. Hey, I want to solve past standard. They have to solve past question. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah. This game last season, the problem of coming back is low. Yeah. 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 Let's, move. Yeah, let's move on. Let's move on because the question is, they vary it. I am going to stay I said nine, but I'm going to do 13. 
of these standards contain little guidance on the meaning of fair value. Others did contain guidance, but this was developed over years, many years, and it's still in a piecemeal manner. So the purpose of I, I is that they want to know the definition of what? Fair value. Fair value. And set out a single framework, framework for measuring the fair value and specify the disclosures measures. So fast forward to the definition. Now, but this, the, the, you know, every standard there's a scope. They said that this, this even came in the exam, so we're doing the IS 19. Eh? IFRS 13 disclosure requirement do not apply to the following. Plan asset measurement at fair value. Do you use IFRS 18? When you're doing plan asset of fair value, do you use IFRS 18? We use actual what? Valuation. Depending on life expectancy, retirement age, and all those things. Okay. When we are going to look at what? IS 26, which you have not done. Retirement benefit plan is different from IS 19. There's IS 26. So, what then is the definition of what? Fair value. Fair value is the price that will what? be received to sell an asset. You have a phone, right? The phone is an asset for you. If you want to sell it, how much will you receive? It's what? Fair value. So, we are looking at it. Let's finish the definition. Let's read the definition before I'll ask that. So whatever you want to see from me is a fair value. Price pay, price amount received to what? Sell an asset. What about if it is something you don't need? You have to go and trade and we want to also pay. Is it a liability? We want to pay to dispose the liability of. So in case it's a liability, amount paid to transfer what? But you know what? This transaction must be in an orderly one. Transaction. Orderly means that don't sell the phone to your husband and say that's a fair value. Are you not related? Can we get fair value there? You still take my money. Is it not is it not possible? Oh, I know. Uh, I mean, I know. That's it. Have you heard what he's saying? Uh, if the opposite, maybe fair value will happen. I know. I know. I know. Very well. Okay. But it must be between what? Market what? So, when you come to sell to me, are you not exiting the market? If you go to the market to sell something, after sell, what happens? Or exit. So that's the fair value is the exit price. You understand? The amount you are exiting the market is the amount me who is coming to buy is also entering the market. So in normal circumstances, the exit price is the same as what the entry price. But we are looking at fair value in terms of exit. So where the exit and what the entry is different, it means that there is the one profit. But now we are looking at only level. Exit what? Price. Exit price. Sometimes the technical knowledge is on the definition we just said. So I'm going to elaborate the definition. We say that fair value is what? Price. Uh -huh. What? Sell. Sell and what? Assets. They all paid to transfer the liability. Okay. Uh huh. In what? An orderly what? In an orderly, orderly what? Transaction. Orderly transaction. Between between what? 
market participants. At what? At what? At what? Measurement. This definition is having a lot. It has changed. That was not this. This is not the definition. This is the definition. The old one was what? Something, something. And I'm still learning all this information. Huh? It's just come out. It's just come out to you. That's why. That's why. That's why. That's So, in this definition, I'm going to explain. We are saying that the transaction must be in an orderly way. Okay. 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 But it must be between what? Market, Market participants. So if this market participant they must have certain what? Characteristics. So if they are going to sell and any of these characteristics is lacking from the market participants, there is not a fair value. If it's not the fair value, if the market participants lack the characteristics I'm going to mention, then whatever sale you have done is not a fair value. So the first one is that market participants must do what? Knowledgeable, right? How do you spend knowledge nowadays? So, they must do what? Knowledgeable. What does it mean by knowledgeable? The buyer knows what he's what? The seller also knows what? Otherwise, you don't have what? Knowledge people. Huh? Otherwise, you don't have knowledgeable people. We cannot get there about knowledgeable Hmm? Oh God. I want to give a funny example. You've gone to the village and you see an old lady with iPhone what? The latest iPhone is what? 15. Uh -huh. The son has bought it from US. He doesn't know how to press it. He came and he was even struggling to make a call. Uh -huh. So he said, I'm going to say, okay, I'm, I still want to sell it. Now, if you just give me some five minutes so that when you can buy this phone, I will give it to you. Then he sells to you at five minutes if you take it. It's not fair. And I say fair value. The one is knowledgeable. So it must be what? Knowledgeable. Two. What can I say again? It should be unrelated. They should not be related. So the market participants should not be under IAS 20. 20 what? 24. Related parties. They should not be a related. Parties. So if a subsidiary sell goods to uh, what? Parent. Uh, can we say the fair value? If the wife sells to the husband, fair value. If the husband sells to the wife, can we have fair value? Don't make it. No. <laughs> <laughs> huh? <laughs> no fair value. The related party. Right. So that means it must not be what? A related party. Not a related party. The, rela the market participant must not be a related party. Another participant, another characteristic. They should be what? Willing to what? Enter. Enter into what? The transaction. Willing. If only you are hot and want to sell your car. The price is the price. You are not willing to invest in the sense of pushing the market. Can you get a fair value? No, 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 no. Hey, hey. You can't. You are not willing. You must be willing. Hmm? It's going to be wrong. <laughs> you understand? So if the company is experiencing cash flows, Problem, liquidity problem, and they are selling their assets because of that they are forced to take the price. Is it fair value? Then, for the must what? They should be able 
the people who are even able to able to us enter into us the transaction. Okay? The guy selling you at the uh, market center in the truck truck, the trucks, right? They are willing to enter into the market. But they are being restricted. Are they also? Are they able to enter into the market? No. So in the process of buying and uh, what is town city guard is coming. The leader you take less and say that's the fair or you take more than the amount, you say that's the fair value. It's not being restricted. So that means that the market participants should be able to enter into a transaction. Without restriction. Without restriction. Really? Not a related party. And what? Not the government. Anytime, anywhere this is lacking, it's not what? A related party. It's not what a fair value. So we are saying that you see the entry price huh? can is always equals to what the exit price if the market participants are what knowledgeable no are not highest in the form are willing where this is negated it's possible you enter the market and the one will exit the different price hmm? uh -huh. Now, we have looked at a particular term given by IFRS 13, known as unit of account. Unit of account. We look at this term, unit of account. What does it mean? Let me say unit of account, what does it mean? How do you find value good? Yes. How do you find value good? So how do you describe? Before you get, how do you describe? Is it in CD then? How do you describe gold in CD? You said how do gold. we value gold? Uh, what do you find value gold? You say gold. What do you find value? Ah. Uh. How do you find value? In what? What would be the unit we give him to it? Right? How do you fair value maybe uh, fuel? I think it's just in liters. Okay? So, when they say fair value, the city is just one of what the unit. Currency unit is one of the units. Now, Sandra, so you can fair value at currency unit. So, if I say I'm fair value at currency unit, you can get it in dollars, naira, or cities, or pounds, currency unit. You can also fair value it in different. So, when they were putting this one together, what unit did they put it together? Yes, it was in the form of what? Cities. You understand that? So, therefore, we value it in cities. So when we say unit of account, we are saying that the level at which an asset or what or a liability is aggregated or what is disaggregated. Okay? So that is the meaning of what? Unit of account. So you must, if I fair value something, you must come out with a unit, right? So what unit? So I know gold is aggregated in what? Um, so I'm fair value in pounds. Whatever. Money grams. How do you feel about gold? Yes, I said grams. I mean, I think What's the spelling? Gold. Gold. No, the unit. 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 So you can find about gold in this, right? What are the characters? Somebody say characters, something, but that's the same thing. 
Is it a carrot or gold or what? Carrot. Carrot. That one is for the when they are burning it for rings and other things. Yes, that is. But the original, the original unit is in plates, not on the original unit. Yes, in plates. When you are buying it from the 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 miners, understand? So see the way they measure it. Blade, as we play, the blade. So the weight of the blade. So it depends on the measurement. So you are count. If I say fair value my car, automatically you come out with what? It's currency what? Because it was in currency you put it together. If you also want to dismantle it, you dismantle in currency unit. That's the meaning of unit of what? No. Now when it comes to when it comes to I for thirteen. They, you are likely to go into face something like this. You know, the standard is so deep, so I'm trying to give you highlight. We call it valuation techniques. That has to go and value my what? As it for you. What are some of the techniques you are going to do what? Employ. What are the valuation techniques? That's standard. So the valuation techniques. You can use what you call market what? You can use market approach. How do you, what do you mean market approach? What do you mean market approach? Okay. When you say market approach, can I go to the market and look for a similar asset like yours? So I cannot look at market participants. What will market participants say a similar asset like yours will cost? Mm -hmm. I'm not going to use the market. Mm -hmm. So market approach says that uses of price or other relevant information from market transaction involving identical or a similar asset or liability. Is not fair? So go to the market. So that's the market approach. Hmm. Two, we can use what? Cost what? Approach. What does cost approach is? If I want to replace that particular asset, the capacity it has now, how much will it care me to replace it? What is the cost of replacing it? That means that's the value. Okay? So cost approach, the amount required to replace the servicing capacity of one, an asset, also known as the current replacement cost. So you have a machine producing. What is the fair value? Okay, today, today, if you want to change this type of machine today, today, with the same operating capacity, you are going to care about 5,000. Ah, okay, then the value of my machine is what? 5,000. That's the cost approach. Alternatively, if you go to market and ask, a similar asset or identical asset is cost how much? They say it's 5,500. That's also the market. That's the one. Fair value. That's market approach and cost approach. And the last one is income approach. Income what? Approach. Approach. What is the income approach? The asset will it produce income for me. To produce income. So can I estimate the income? Mm -hmm. Can I get a discount rate? Yes. And discount all of them to the present value, mm -hmm. like we did in business valuation. So that becomes what? The income approach. So in the income approach, will you go to the market? Will you ask anyone? This is not the company's own valuation they are trying to adapt. Hmm? So All this approach, which one should you use? Hmm? Are you sure? What did the standard say? We are saying that in trying to what? Use fair value and asset, we should be mindful of two things. Our aim is to that is to maximize, maximize. That's what I do today. 
very well. Very, very, very well. Maximize the use of what? The use of what? Of zero. Or zero what? Input. Whatever method you are using, make sure you maximize the use of what? Of zero what? Input. And rather minimize. Minimize what? The use of all observable words. What is observable input? Any input I'm getting from market participants are observable. If I go to the market and ask what's the price of a Toyota Corolla? and the people are there, they have experience in it. That information I'm taking is not coming from the market. It's not from market participants. You see that information is observable. Do you understand that? No. <laughs> what do you say observable is this? The inputs that you are getting to the fair value, those inputs are being observed from the market. It is the market that has given you that input. So they are observable inputs. On the other hand, if I decide to use my own valuation techniques to sit in my company and estimate income, uh, discount them, those inputs are they coming from the market. We say they are not observable. They are not observable. Too. So the standard only says that you should make sure that whatever method you are adapting, you should make sure that you are maximizing the use of what? So, for example, maybe the information that I need from the market is not available. That is why I will come and use cost. Even the cost for me is not available. That's why I come and use what? So, that's why we come to the levels. But the standard did not actually place one above the other. But what happens if you are adopting this one? Should we change it? It should be consistent because what, what, whatever you are adapting is accounting what? Policy. ISA, right? So whatever technique you are adapting, you are adapting as accounting what? Policy. And you can only change accounting policy when there is a change in IFRS. Or, or when the change will lead to more what? A prepared presentation of what? The financial statement. So if you change from market to cost, I don't know what explanation you are going to give me. You don't have any better information to give me. Because it's more observable than what? This. But if I change you from this to this, you can explain. So, these are what we call valuation what? techniques. By whatever valuation techniques you are using, be mindful to make, to maximize the use of what? Observable input and minimize the use of what? Unobservable input. You said the unobservable one is in the hour. It's coming from the company, the company own valuation techniques. So the income, you didn't go to the market. You just say that this asset it will produce thousand, thousand, thousand for the next five years. Therefore, the present value of the thousand is the value. Is is the information coming from the market? So it means when you make estimates, it's not coming from the market. It's unobservable. How come we are supposed to do that? If you go to the market, no information. If you come to that, then you go to... Look. In a way to summarize the whole thing, if the question is coming, either they will test you on price. You check the question. They will test you on price. Or they will test you on market. Or if it's a non-financial asset, <coughs> if it's a non-financial asset, they will test you on higher, higher, higher and best. So you have to read the question. And know where you are under. Higher investment market. And what? Price. 
So when you are reading the question and you see something like quoted prices, mm -hmm. active market, quoted prices, active market, identical assets, similar assets, they are talking about what? Price. Quoted prices, identical assets. Similar asset, active market, less active market. We are talking about price. Okay? Active market, quoted prices, identical assets, and similar assets. They are talking about price. But when you hear principal market, principal, and most advantageous, they are talking about what? Market. Okay? When you hear higher and less use, they are talking about non-financial assets. So let's start from here. Yeah. Uh -huh. So that yeah, would be it. Yes. The one. Advantage. Most advantageous market. That's not a sad market. You can get there. I'm just trying to give you a brief image. Oh, so you said when we hear higher and less use, they are talking about. What? Higher and less use. Higher. Higher and best use. Most advantageous or principal is market. Eh? Most advantageous and principal is our market. If you hear active market, quoted prices is about the price. So what you are saying, I remember all this. We should also buy a mind that we have to make sure you make maximize the use of what? Now, because of that, first of all, if you want to use price to what? Then let's put it in levels. You have level one, one input. Go for level one input to value the asset. It is when level one input is not there, then you can lower your standard to level two. What is level one input? Do you have quoted prices of the assets? Mm -hmm. huh? Of what? Identical assets. Identical what? Assets. In, in what? An active market. That means the price is first class price. That's the maximum you can get. Hmm? You, you bought you bought thousand shares of what? MTN at four cities. Is it is that an asset? <laughs> <laughs> is that an asset? So what are you reading? I'm just writing. Okay. So I would have one. I said M. C. T. M. What do you think is wrong with my writing? So you bought M. C. Shares, thousand of them, right? M. At what? Forty. Hmm. Is MTN traded in the stock market? Yes. yes. Can we get quoted prices of MTN shares? Yes. You want to value your MTN shares? Can't you go to the market? Yes. Okay. So we go to Ghana Stock Exchange. Now arrive at the point. Yes. And we check the price is high since. Then we go to South Africa what? Stock what? Yeah. Exchange. MTN is the parent company is in what? South, South Africa. Africa. Yeah. Uh -huh. Of which the price there is 4.5. So, one, is there quoted prices? Yes. Is the asset identical or similar? Identical. It's identical, the same MTN, identical. So, you have met one, two. Is the market active or less active? Active. active. So, what is an active market? <laughs> <laughs> what is an active market? 
So when you say an active market, huh? when you say an active market, what is the frequency of transactions happening? That means the market is active. You understand that? So the, the frequency of transaction, the market with high frequency of transaction happening is an active word market. So if South Africa South Asia is the active market, they have to pick what? 4.15. That is the level one what? You see level one input? First class. Are you not maximizing the use of observable input? From there, let's go to level two. Level two input says that. Uh -huh. We are choosing the 4.5. Yes, because I'm making an assumption that the South Africa stock exchange is an active market. Whatever market is an active market, we are making that price. So that's why we say that active what? Market. Level 2 says that quoted price of identical, identical what? Assets. Is that the same thing? In a less active what market. So what is happening is that I don't really have access to this market. This is active market. But I know the general stock exchange market is a market that's less active. Oh, so I'll take a quoted price, identical asset. But since it's coming from less active market. It's a level two. I can pick the five and make an adjustment. So level two is what? Coded price of identical asset in one less active. Or you can take a coded price of what? Similar asset in and what? Active what? Okay? So what is this? What is the difference between this and this? Here, the stock exchange is 4.15, right? Do you see this is active? So is the quoted price there? Quoted, right? But when I got there, unfortunately, I have what? Buddha what? Shares. It's Buddha and what? MTN and Similar. Similar. So I'm taking a similar asset. Quoted price also in an active market so that I can now adjust it to reflect my work. So it's still level what? Two. Uh -huh. Still level two. Then the last one, still level two. Mm -hmm. Level two, if it is a similar asset in an active market. Yes. Okay. Okay. Or can it be similar asset and less active? They are all level two. They are all level two. The last one is that if I enter the market and you are asking market participants or information coming from market participants is called what? Ozeomula input. Do you know that this is Ozeomula input? Base yes. price. Do you know this also is that Ozeomula input? Base yes. price. But do you know that market participants can give me some input that is not price? They can give me the current inflation rate that will determine the amount of the assets coming from the market. The exchange rate can determine the amount of the assets. <laughs> so we're saying that if you enter and you have to take what we call observable ones, any observable input, you know what that means now? Any observable input that are not what? Price. Yes, they are all input, but they are not price. Here is what? Price, here is what? Price. But here, they are still coming from the market, but they are not what? Price. So you say that they are what? Observable input. That's A D. That's price. Not price. Not price. Uh-huh. Now math is faster than that. Yeah. Okay? You see the level two. Are you, are you not maximizing the use of observable inputs? Now again, this is not there. 
Nous avons que les watts. Ah, très watts. Input. La voiture qui vous c'est watts. On. En watts. Vous avez un bon. Input. How is that? How is that? So you know that. Market approach. All this can fall under market approach. Can this also fall under market approach? But this cannot fall under market approach. Do you know that this cannot fall under cost? This is higher, below high cost. This is below cost. But this fall under what? Cost approach. Because as you input for the market. Do you know this cannot, cannot be cost? So this is also what? Income. So if so, can we bring the book? They will use them together. So this is the price. So you can see a full portion of price. Hmm? Well, tomorrow, tomorrow we are continuing. So, so what is now? What about what? The market. What about the market? And I think uh, they have been testing on non financial asset uh, or business valuation. High investment. High investment. Uh, what about the market? So let's look at the market. Now, they can also want you to value the asset based on the market approach. That's the market. Saying that, look, if you want to know the value of the asset, enter into a market and pick the price there. That is a fair value. But enter into one, a principal one. A principal market. Principal was market. That means there's principal market and active was. Active market is level of frequency. Principal market is the market where large volume of transaction related to the asset is taking place. Principal means large volume of what? Transaction related to the asset takes place. Hmm? So, spare pass, you can get at what? Kumbi, you can also get at market what? Circle. There are shops and tasks. Which one? Do you know, since it's car engine and car pass, whatever that is coming from Coco Bay, you should expect that to be the correct one. Yes. That is the one, the principal one. The MC is what? But it's just a market circle. I'm just saying that. Maybe Coco Bay is a market circle. It's not in the standard, but let's give it a number. So, market circle, large volume is what I'm carrying there, right? But a lot of engines are all in one. Hmm. So, say Coco Bay is the principal one. Market. So, fair value asset using what? The principal market. Last one of them, that's the take one, please. What if there is no what? Principal market. Or even there is a principal market, but you are restricted. Remember the definition. You don't have access to the principal market. Is there no alternative market? Yes. So we say that enter into most advantageous market. So what is this market? Hmm? Let me give you two markets. Let's say you have that market. Okay. market. <laughs> So, look at what? Market. And you have a piece of what to sell. You have a piece of what to sell. Mm. <coughs> what? Mm. Huh? Mm. Pork. Pork. Mm. Piece of what? Mm. <laughs> <laughs> but we are talking of assets. <laughs> huh? It can be, can be anything. Liability. Like <laughs> right? So let's say you have 
<laughs> you have to sell your bicycle. <laughs> you have to sell your bicycle. You have to say, oh, they're selling price. That's what it is. It's crazy. Right. Hmm? They're selling price in photo chrome. This what? 22. Let's add a uh, shaman market in addition. Because that's a place. That's where a lot of people ride bicycle. So the selling price there is what? The selling price there is uh, 20. That is. You say what can I say more? Okay? I'll tell you something about Now, if you carry them bus to the market, do transportation. I'm sending a question already. You do transportation, how much? How much will be transportation? Uh, Tamale is not far, so one. Here is two. Shaman is far, three. You see the transportation? Then, when you enter there, you have to pay some levy, you call it transaction cost. In the market, you have to get some cost. So you pay for transaction what? Transaction cost, right? So transaction cost here, People like money too much, so it's straight. As I go to Koyoko, it reduces to two. Transaction so cost Shaman is just one. At the end of the day, when you sell the asset, how much do you get here? 20. One. 20. One. How much do you get from here? 18. Huh? 18. 18. How much do we get here? 17. 16. 16. So this asset, depending on the market that this is how much you're going to get, right? Yeah. Which market will they enter to sell? Tap right. Yeah. So you see that tap right will give you the best. Huh? Yeah. So tap right is the most advantageous one. Market. market. So most advantageous market is the market where you are going to maximize the amount you see to sell what? Yes. The asset. Or minimize. The amount you are going to pay to transfer what? The liability. That's the most advantageous. Now, my question is unit of activity, unit of what? Activity taking place. In that private market, they can only sell what? 20 bicycles a day. Here they can sell 25 bicycles. Here they sell 60 bicycles. Have you seen that? Now, which market will we enter to fair value your asset? To be a, a fair value? Which market will we enter? Shama. Look at it, which market will we enter? Shama. Shama. Why? Because greater volume of activity is happening in where? So that's the principal one. Market. Go to the principal market and say the fair value is what? That's another story. But we are entering into Shamaya what? The third one. Because that's the principal market. market. Have you seen that? Mm -hmm. If the person says that, what if the, you have restriction to Shamaya market? Which market will you enter? Yes, the most advantageous. Which is what? Okay. Yes, eh? Now, I have not just finished that, I can just end. I have to conclude. Now, 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 how do we determine this here? We took what and what and what? We took this one out. We took this one out to get this one. So, in determining the most advantageous market, you have to be that one. Transportation and transaction costs. Now, I don't want to talk about this. But my concentration is on what? Transaction. This is that in here. In the term, the most advantageous market, you need to be that what? Transaction what? Cost. But in determining the fair value, you don't need to be that what? Transaction cost. 
in determining which market is most advantageous, you take into consideration by the data transaction of costs. You just take the one, 18 and 16. Now that I know that the most advantageous market is this one, huh? mm -hmm. then the fair value, I do not need to do that one. That means the fair value becomes 21. Four. Four. Not 21. You see this is a market. The fair value becomes what? 20 what? 17, not what? 16. We don't consider the transaction cost when you determine what? The fair value. But we consider transaction cost when you are determining what? The most advantageous. So we're going to about tomorrow 12 o'clock. We do the higher and best use inside the beats. Then we solve the questions. Then we move to another standard. Can I write that more? Let me go to Accra and come. So you travel. Let me go to Accra and come. You have to travel. This is your new girl. You have to travel. No, we have to travel. Yes, we have to travel. You have to travel. See, on Sunday, you have to delay the effort. This is my fifth. Uh, one. Very good. Hey, Sunday. Go ahead.